La Asamblea escuchará ahora. The Assembly will now hear an address by His Excellency Mr. Heiji G. Gengob, President of the Republic of Namibia. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. In nombre de la On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome to the United Nations His Excellency Haig G. Gengob, President of the Republic of Namibia, and to invite him to address the Assembly. Your Excellency, Ms. Maria Fernandez Espinosa, Assis, President of the 73rd Session of United Nations General Assembly, Your Excellency's Head of State and Government, Your Excellency Mr. Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, Madam President, I wish to congratulate you on your election as President of the 73rd Session of this August Assembly. On July 21st, 2018, the people of Namibia and our friends around the world laid to rest our first foreign minister, Dr. Theo ben -Gurira. He represented our liberation movement, SWAPO, here at the United Nations for over 15 years. Under his presidency, at the 54th session of the United Nations General Assembly, we adopted the Millennium Development Goals, the precursor to the Sustainable Development Goals. The family of Dr. Gurira, the government, and the people of the Republic of Namibia have been deeply touched by the outpouring of condolences and sympathies following his death. We are deeply appreciative of the memorial service held in his honor here at the UN headquarters. Two months ago, I traveled to Nigeria to bury a former UN Secretary, Under Secretary General and Executive Secretary of the Economic Commission for Africa, who worked with us during our liberation struggle. I refer to Professor Adebayo Adedeji. Two weeks ago, I traveled to Accra for the burial of Mr. Kofi Annan, the seventh Secretary General of this venerable organization, an African son whose flame has been extinguished, but whose light will shine on through the ages. A few days ago, in this very hall, we gathered to pay tribute to this revered personality, an architect of peace. He was a man of great stature, who dedicated his entire adult life towards the pursuit of global peace and security. May the souls of these distinguished sons of Africa and UN rest in eternal peace. Following the end of the Cold War and the old bipolar dispensation, the world has slowly drifted ever more worryingly to a unilateral action. This development goes against one of the fundamental tenets of democracy upon which our organization is built. It is for this reason that we must embrace multilateralism with greater agency to counter unilateral action. It is also for this reason that we fully concur with Secretary General's sentiments as contained in his statement to this assembly that, and I quote, as today's problems grow ever more global, multilateralism is more important than ever, unquote. The Republic of Namibia is founded upon the principles of democracy the rule of law and justice. The fundamental rights and freedoms enshrined in our constitution 
include virtually all the rights and freedoms recognized in international human rights instruments. However, these instruments in themselves are not sufficient to bring about sustainable development. Namibia recognizes that there are existing and emerging threats and challenges that continue to frustrate individual and collective efforts to achieve greater socioeconomic progress. To this end, Namibia has embraced sustainable development and is fully committed to Agenda 2030 and its principles, goals, targets, and indicators. As a matter of fact, Namibia has integrated all 17 goals and their targets in its national development plans. As a dry and arid country, often affected by seasonal droughts and floods, we have stepped up our efforts to implement the SDGs in critical areas such as energy, water, and terrestrial ecosystems. In this respect, Namibia wishes to benefit from the assistance rendered through the Technological Bank established on 4th June 2018 in Istanbul to enable the time years identification of spatial locations of drought and flood areas. While Namibia has witnessed sustained economic growth over much of the last 10 years, unemployment remains persistently high. Nevertheless, Namibia observed one of the fastest reductions of poverty levels in our region over the last 10 years, from 20 8.8% to 17.4%. I'm also happy to inform that life expectancy in Namibia has risen from 58 to 65 years. However, inequality in Namibia remains a challenge as reflected in the skewed ownership of land where white Namibians own 70% of all agricultural land. In our pursuit of creating favorable conditions to fight poverty and maintain peace and stability, Namibia will hold its second national land conference during the first week of October 2018. In preparation for conference, the government conducted consultations in all 14 regions to ensure an inclusive process. We believe in consultation. If diplomacy fails, people go to war. That is why we are pursuing an inclusive, consultative process with the full knowledge that inclusivity spells harmony and exclusivity spells conflict. We have made a concerted effort to include as many stakeholders as possible and to ensure that every, everything will be done with the, um, within the ambit of our laws. As a result, we call on our development partners to support the outcome of this conference so as to continue assisting us in the process of socio-economic transformation. Madam President, I have stated before that Namibia's classification as an upper middle income nation does not take into account the skewed distribution of income. It prevents us from assessing official development assistance and affordable concessional finance. The situation has potential to jeopardize efforts in Namibia and other developing countries to fully achieve Agenda 2030. Communicable diseases through threaten to jeopardize the attainment of Agenda 2030. For that reason, Namibia endorses the call to end democracies endemic and reaffirms her commitment to unite with the world in achieving this goal. With a population of approximately 2.5 million people. Namibia ranks ninth highest affected by TB, which is one of the top three causes of hospitalization. The government of Namibia has demonstrated its commitment to address TB by including related, related targets in the fifth national development plan and also by ensuring that 70% of available funding for TB comes from domestic resources. I should caution that inadequate human and financial resources, high level of poverty, 
and lack of public health services in rural areas remain a concern. As the chairman of Southern African Development Community, our region reaffirms its commitment to the declaration through the harmonized surveillance framework for HIV and AIDS, tuberculosis and malaria, and resolves to join the international community in the fight against tuberculosis. I congratulate the Secretary General for launch of United Nations Global Youth Strategy. Africa has the fastest growing youth population. In my capacity as Chairman of SATEC, I wish to inform you that the region has adopted a strategy to achieve industrialization by 2063. In this regard, the 38th SATEC Summit, which took place in August 2018 in Benduk, Namibia, adopted the theme, and I quote, promoting infrastructure, development, and youth empowerment for sustainable development, unquote. We are convinced that the youth of SATEC, and indeed the world, are the future custodians of our social, political, and economic governance infrastructure. As such, the youth needs to be capacitated with requisite skills and training and economically empowered through entrepreneurship to drive development towards inclusive growth and shared prosperity. The youth of the SADC region, like their counterparts in the world, yearn for better prospects. They yearn for a future of opportunity and job certainty, where the fourth industrial revolution will represent or present opportunity and not threat a future characterized by rapid advancement of technologies, advanced robotics, artificial intelligence, and mechanization should present, should not present more, should present more opportunities and not problems for our youth and humanity at large. The onus is on us to mitigate the potential problems these technologies can bring and understand how they can be used enable our youth to become drivers of economic growth and industrial development. Let me emphasize that exclusion, or excluding women from certain spheres of life is to put to waste skills and expertise that can contribute to sustainable development. In this context, we applaud the Secretary General for exercising leadership and thus reaching gender parity among senior management and resident coordinators. Namibia is fully committed to implementing gender equality, which is evident in the important role women play in our politics. The late Secretary General Kofi Annan was right when he said, and I quote, gender equality is more than a goal in itself. It is a precondition for meeting the challenge of reducing poverty, promoting sustainable development, and building good governance, unquote. The world should do more to make gender equality a reality. While we commend the Secretary General for his successful reform initiatives, may I remind this August Assembly of the historic pledge we all made during the World Summit held in 2005, a pledge, and I quote, to strengthen United Nations with a view to enhancing its authority and efficiency and to address effectively the full range of challenges of our time." Unquote. It is time to ensure we live up to that pledge. In this regard, it is pertinent to demonstrate the political will of the United Nations membership with regard to, address, to redressing Africa's exclusion from the Security Council. The world has moved on. The old and unjust order cannot persist. Africa and its 1.2 billion inhabitants can no longer be excluded from assuming its place on this primary decision-making body. Afri for Africa and the rest of the developing world, peace is a main foundation and, and guarantor for sustainable growth, economic growth and development. As leaders, together with the citizenry of the great African continent, we need to understand that it is our collective responsibility to maintain peace in order to enable 
Africa to unlock its full potential. Every step that advances a peaceful, Af peaceful Africa should be welcomed. In that vein, we commend His Excellency Abiy ah Ahmed, the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, and his Eritrean counterpart, His Excellency President Asias Aweke, for signing an agreement to end war between their countries and the subsequent resumption of diplomatic and trade ties. I'm confident that this spirit of unity, peace, and security as embodied in the AU Agenda 2063 would be transplanted throughout the Horn of Africa and all parts affected, afflicted by conflict in Africa. Namibia is a child of international solidarity, midwife by the United Nations. We, relieved, we relied on the solidarity of the nations of the world to support us in our quest to achieve our self-determination. Therefore, we call on the implementation of UN resolutions and decisions which will lead to a positive, peaceful, and permanent solution that meets the aspirations and will of the people of the Western Sahara. In the same vein, we reaffirm our support for the people of the occupied territory of Palestine in their pursuit of self-determination, justice, freedom, and independence. During the dark days of our fight for independence, the government and the people of Cuba joined Angola to come to our aid, shedding their blood for our liberation, resulting in the consequential battle of Quito Quanabal, which led to negotiations, elections, and eventual freedom. It is in this spirit of profound kinship we share with the Cuban people that we renew our call for the lifting of the decades-old, outdated, ineffective, and counterproductive economic and financial embargo of Cuba. The time is now for all of us to demonstrate the leadership required to bring prosperity and peace to all the world's people. It is time to lead in the spirit of peace and the spirit of equality and the spirit of sustainability. It is time to make the United Nations relevant to all the world's people. Let us seize this unique moment in history. I thank you. In nombre de la Asamblea General. On behalf of the General Assembly, I would like to thank his Excellency H. G. Jingob, President of the Republic of Namibia, for the statement just made. May I request representatives to remain seated while we greet the head of state. <laughs> 